Here's a map that shows where the Seal River is relative to New England and the northern part of the United States. The green pencil shows where we got into the river, and the red pencil shows where we, we uh, reached the coast at Hudson Bay above the town of Churchill. We drove to the town of South Indian Lake, that's as far as the road goes north in that region, and hired someone to carry us by boat to the northern end of South Indian Lake. When we reached the settlement of South Indian Lake, we found out that everyone in town knew who we were and why we were there and, and where we were going. Uh, we we uh, met Kelly, who uh, had a little trouble getting his boat started, but after about an hour's tinkering with it, was able to uh, get going. And, and even though he hadn't been to the, the north end of South Indian Lake for 30 years, Ben was an excellent navigator, and he, he took us uh, way further than we ever expected. Uh, we saw uh, ice on the north end of uh, the lake, as we were getting there, and then uh, began to paddle up uh, Little Sand Creek. It was three days of paddling against the current. Uh, the current wasn't always real strong, but in places uh, it was a challenge. The biggest challenge was the log jams, quite a few log jams. We never had to portage around any. We were able to drag over and around most of them without uh, unloading our gear. A total of uh, 15 hours upstream paddling over the course of three days. So here you can see our meandering route between where we were dropped off and where we paddled up Little Sand River to Little Sand Lake. We still had two more lakes to cross before we would be actually on the downstream side in the next watershed. It was a paddle across a lake, up the outlet stream that flowed into that lake, across the next lake, up the outlet stream, and each time the streams between the lakes would get a little bit smaller, more congested. In some places we did have to get out axes and saws until we finally could clear the path. When we finally reached the portage, uh, we camped at the head of the portage for two days because of bad weather and we didn't realize that we were camped on the wrong portage trail until we reached the far end of it and found ourselves in a lake with no outlet. At that point we should have just turned around and portaged right back out but we saw a little outlet stream on the map and decided to try that because the portage had been uh, quite difficult. This map shows some of the problems we had navigating the height of land portage area. First of all, the main portage. I got lost in the woods for four hours one morning while my friend was asleep, and that wasn't great. Uh, later on, what's listed as Camp 4 and 5 here shows where we portaged into the wrong lake and uh, spent the day bushwhacking back to the lake from which we originally started. But then you can see the portage over to Camp 6, and from that point, uh, it was all downstream or across lakes, no more uphill. So here's an example of totally wasted effort portaging into a dead-end lake and a lot of wasted effort getting back out of that lake. That, that outlet stream was never intended to float a boat, but uh, we did it anyway. We had some of our best weather at the begin beginning of the trip, and as we spent this day uh, bushwhacking through this little stream, we had a uh, warm, sunny day, and for the next uh, day or two, we had the best weather we had. Here's the correct portage trail. And on the other side of this trail, uh, it's all downhill. Now, all throughout the uh, watershed, the water was out of its banks. And many places where we expected to camp on beaches, we found the beaches totally underwater. And the finding a decent campsite was a big issue pretty much throughout the trip. Welcome to camp. The exception to difficult camping was on what are called eskers. Eskers are basically huge sand dunes that run sometimes for many kilometers, up to 100 kilometers sometimes, and not necessarily parallel to the river. In this case, the river cuts straight across this esker. You can see the other side of it, on the other side of the river. They're, they're formed by glaciers, and um, they're some of the best campsites in a place where usually it's bushwhacking your way through a swamp. The only real disadvantage of eskers is sometimes it's uh, quite a task to haul all your stuff up from the river to the top of these eskers. They're sometimes 80, 100 feet tall. Now at the first uh, great esker campsite that we found, um, there was an eagle soaring around as we got there. These are uh, bear prints in the sand on one of the eskers. Um, and after we were hauling our, as we were hauling our stuff up from the bottom here, uh, these fish that we had uh, caught during the day and were planning to have for supper were stolen by an eagle. 
But the great thing about it is so easy to catch huge pike there that just before dark, with just a few casts, we were able to catch a, another big pike, and that was our, our uh, dinner that night. And a great sunset was also a part of the experience at that particular esker.